Hello. Hi, Kev. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> Do come in. Yes, I'll follow you. So this is my studio with my... Brilliant. Uh, yeah. My great door. Wow. I'll tidy right. it up a bit, but not that much. <laughs> they all say that. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm scanning around Rosie's studio and I can see she's got lots of unstretched canvases pinned to the thing. Quite dark beginnings, I think. They, these are, yeah. This sort of dark base, is, is this how you um, start? And then I can see the beginnings of drawing, maybe, I don't know, a sort of sketching out things. And I know on your website you said that you base a lot of them on, on photographs and then you abandon the source material at some point. Ah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I used to did it, do that more. Yeah. Um, now I don't do that so much. I do rely on memory and... Uh, I mean, I don't want to... Imagination It's not... I don't know if that really... Ex I don't think anything is imagination. I think it's yeah. just remembered bits and bobs. I might not be able to place it, but um, they can't, everything comes from somewhere. Pretty much all of these, they start off with the paint, and it's a, it, they're all like that. They're all uh, a response to what happens on the surface of the canvas. Yeah. More than, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to paint this view or yeah. this place. Nothing's as absolute as that. Um, sometimes, yeah, you know, it's a bit. So more. You're waiting for the 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 paint to prompt. Um, something you know yes i'm just wondering what prompts the drawing because it, there's, there's, there's the, when i look at your work i can see it over here there's quite a lot of um charcoal drawing you're working into the paint yeah um i mean i love charcoal um i'm trying not to use it too much because i felt like i was using it too much yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i'm not sure it's always the right thing to do but I do like using it I like that you can blend it into the paint because there's a sort of harmony going on with it with working in the drawing the charcoal drawing into the actual color you know in your paintings it doesn't seem a separate thing it seems yeah I'm just wondering at what stage you you, you move into the drawing these charcoal drawing that one I did the draw I started off with charcoal drawing on the on the raw canvas yeah then rabbit skin glued it and then started with some uh, I usually put a bit of distemper and stuff yeah and then it's got quite a lot of oil paint actually this one but um I've been drawing at each stage uh, and I often do do that keep drawing so a lot of the drawing is there from the very original drawing but some of it just disappears do you always start out with an unstretched canvas pinned onto the um, to the board. Mostly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. Is um, that because you can roll it up? <laughs> well, and, and... I mean, stretchers are, are expensive, yeah. particularly if you're yeah. going to use do big things. Yeah. And they're not all going to be in some marvellous exhibition. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you can roll them up easily. And, yeah, yeah so I'll stretch them afterwards if they do get into a marvellous exhibition. But um, I just like working them on them on the wall like that yeah i'm constantly taking them off and putting them back on again i mean i work on the floor sometimes on them and um yeah i like to kind of move them around so we've just had a discussion about how work stacks up <laughs> and you see this in every artist studio you know and bit by bit there's less and less space for the artist <laughs> <laughs> well as I, we were saying, the um, having them unstretched means I can roll them up, and if you turn yeah. round, you might see. Um, Jesus, let's have a look. Um, yeah, there's the evidence. Look, and and that's not. Uh, yeah, they're rolled. There's several rolled together. I mean, if you imagine, if I'd got all of those yeah. stretched, that would be. I wouldn't be. We wouldn't be in here. We'd <laughs> be outside. <laughs> so there you go, kids. Staple your, <laughs> staple the canvas up onto the wall, roll them up. There's a distinct lack of humans here. Yes. And, um, and uh, you know, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because we're all quite familiar with modern landscape painting and where the, the humans appear like silhouettes. Mm. They just 
stand in the landscape, silhouetted against a, a colour field of you know of, of abstract landscape. Is that something that you've reacted against? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm wondering why there aren't any humans in your paintings. I wouldn't say I've reacted against it in a you know a strong way, but yeah. um, I don't want humans in mainly. I think I always felt that, or sometimes I feel that when you've got humans in uh, a landscape, it kind of dates, it kind of places it in a time Mm. and also makes the the painting more prescriptive in a way that it kind of makes the, it gives the narrative, it kind of pinpoints the narrative a little bit more. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, that's what I always felt. I was a printmaker for a very long time and then started painting, not you know, a while ago now, but not relatively recently. But um, painting has changed the subject matter. And, uh, oh, not the subject matter, but the way I uh, approach an image and what I'm doing. But I don't want people in them. Yeah. The, the viewer looks for a narrative immediately if there's a, a, you know, a human presence in an image. It's not Entirely abstract, is it? It is referring to, uh, you know, the detritus of mm. of life and all that. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I think humans are very... I think I say that in the website, something. They're very present, but they're not very yeah. present. The part of the reason as well that I'm not putting figures in, I just don't really like painting them. Yeah. I mean, it, because yeah. it comes back to the paint. All of it comes back to the painting and the paint and the, the actual... Yeah. Uh, that, the, you know, the way the paint works... I mean, mattresses are an, a brilliant way of getting colour, unexpected colour in a yeah. landscape. That was the original reason for putting... Yeah, you know, so, was a, so they're not landscape painting where you, you don't see any cars, you don't see any, any evidence of the ugly side of life. Mm. You, it seems to me that you're, you're quite attracted to uh, put, putting those things in. Well, yes. As I a mean, foil. Yeah. <laughs> It is partly a foil, but it's also that's where um, you know what you you we see it. We live in South East London. Yeah. Um, there's no point in pretending mattresses aren't there. And this is quite an unlikely. It's, it's quite. It's, it's quite like the place uh, pl- the place it was based on. There's a feeling about it which I feel is quite accurate, but um, it's obviously represented in a way that you perhaps wouldn't immediately think about that place. The problem I have, and I, I mean, I keep talking about place and where they're based and all this kind of thing, because that's what people always ask. Yeah. They always say, oh, where is that? Yeah. And often they are based on a place, but then they become very different from the place. And also it's slightly annoying because I don't know that that's the point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think it is the point. Yeah. Viewers always, always seem to want context, don't they? Mm. They, they yeah. Um, the last few exhibitions I've sat in, you know, um, vid- invigilated in, they go straight to the information, the, uh, th- you know, and barely look at the at the artwork. They seem to want context mm. before anything else. Um, how, how has your work changed over the years? What was, what did it look like ten years ago? Um, well, it was, I suppose, much more straight landscapes. They were very much truer to the the uh, to the place in some some ways oh that was what was important that isn't what's important with these why did that change can you can you remember how yeah how it i think it's just literally painting has done that because i've been mm. just have become so interested in how you were in applying the paint and all all the stuff the paint does yeah and how you can yeah. use paint to represent things is yeah i mean it sounds and you know an obvious thing but it is it uh, amazing i mean it, it's endlessly Amazing yeah. and yeah. Uh, frustrating uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, I find that fascinating, which is why I like to try and combine painting languages in the painting. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it works better than others, but um, just because it's, you get, I get carried, a bit carried away with the whole paint, all the paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm quite interested in the focus and where mm. you're looking, you know, the idea of the foreground, the midground. And, there's a, some Dutch, Philip, is it Philips Conning, I think. Uh, there's a load of them in the National Gallery, but a uh, uh, Dutch 17th century landscape guy. Yeah. And um, he, play, he has that where he has the midground is the in focus and the foreground is 
sort of out of focus. And I like that I idea of... So I often do... I've often done that, actually. Yeah, I, I noticed it on, on the painting, this painting down here, you know. Right. So yeah. that the further away things actually are more in focus than the nearer things. Yeah, I don't know quite why I like doing it. I just like playing around with that. Yeah, this is a good example, isn't it? You know, uh, different ways of focusing. Mm. Sometimes I don't... I haven't fixed the charcoal, so when I paint, yeah, it drags. Which can be nice. It can be nice. It can be annoying if I've forgotten. You've kind of used a palette knife. It looks like a palette knife to add something like a highlight there in the middle. And um, yeah, mm. that that sometimes that works. It doesn't. Uh, yes, yeah, when it doesn't work, it's an, um, annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, painting is an annoying process. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah. endlessly frustrating i don't know that i like it yesterday when i left here i thought you know i just don't want to paint now <laughs> i want to do something else <laughs> you gonna... <laughs> yeah is there an ice cream shop anywhere nearby <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i don't know if i ever really enjoy it i mean some you know mm. really mm. <laughs> it does seem that you know, a kind of process of setting up things to f deliberately frustrate you. Mm. And then you have to sort of solve solve them somehow. Uh, and then you feel like a clumsy fool if you if you nothing's going right. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you do something you you're happy with, and then you destroy it. I yeah. always yeah. like it like I'm compelled to destroy anything nice yeah. I've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> I mean, you get there eventually, I suppose. How, how much time do you spend painting? I'm quite curious. Um, well, it depends. Um, uh, some more, some weeks more than others. I've, uh, uh, I have a job and it's part-time technician and I teach as well. And some weeks I have like, mm. three or four days in the studio. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I do prioritise the painting over other things that I should be doing, you know, probably should do, like, you know, housework and shopping and fixing things you know those yeah. kind of things i get really frustrated if i can't come in mm. to the studio and, and irritated yeah i don't know what i'd do if i didn't do it mm. i'd have a much uh tidier flat <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so distemper yes what is it what's distemper? Well, distemper is pigment mixed with uh rabbit skin glue okay Traditionally, it's used on um, plaster for freezes and things mm. like that. I use it quite thinly. Yeah, just like, it took me a long time to kind of come to terms with it. And then I, it's like a real struggle. Yeah. And I quite, quite like that. It just seems to work for what I want. Um, so getting nice washy effects. And Andrew Cranston's using it in vast con quantities and yeah. selling his yeah. work for a large amount of money. Yeah, well, well done, Andy. <laughs> so um if it's all right for him i think it's all right and i think you know i am a bit of a masochist i think and i i was brought up as a catholic and that's uh probably partly involved where i i just like things that are slightly difficult i knew it <laughs> if things go smoothly you don't trust it if things go smoothly no mm. I, yeah probably that's that's yeah way of putting it yes yeah that's funny isn't it mm. you know because in any other if you're fixing something and then things go smoothly you think yes but you know this the thing you care about most and it if it goes smoothly you don't like it no that's odd yes weird i don't know what to say to that but you know <laughs> we are <best. laughs>